Okay, so after a couple of days break for my own emotional stuff, we are back with Soap Season 4, Episode 13. I'm also still playing my game, so sorry if I seem distracted. I am a little bit, not really. Um, also, I apologize if it gets loud. If somebody keeps deciding they're going to have a party and then shutting it down again, so <laughs> there's like random bass beat for 10 minutes and then nothing. And then music again. And I don't know what's going on. It's Friday night, so it's probably not going to stop. So we're just going to push through and try to get something filmed anyway. We're only, I think, um, 10 episodes from the end. We should be less than 10 episodes from the end, actually, because um, there's only 21, 22. Let me look, actually. I can check it. Instead of guessing... There's 21 episodes in season 4, and then that's it for um, Soap. So, we're less than 10 episodes away from the end, unfortunately. Uh, in the last episode, we found out that Chester is Danny's father, so he's going to donate a kidney to him. And I can't remember what else we found out. Wait, was the last episode the one with the, the Kung Fu dungeon training babies what the fuck was going on with that Is that triple tap what happened this is the story of two sisters jessica tate and mary gamble these are the tates and these are the campbells and this is so bad. A little loud, sorry. <laughs> there are easier ways to open a co coconut. <laughs> Polynesian restaurant, and I stabbed my lip with a toothpick and shoved an umbrella up my nose. <laughs> Jess, you know I would never hurt you. Never, ever. Of course not, Mary. I know you'd never shove an umbrella up my nose. <laughs> you'd probably take it out. <laughs> I mean, intentionally hurt you. Of course not. Except for that one time you shoved me out the tree when I was eight years old. <laughs> but we've always had each other, no matter what. Anyway, I deserve to be put. I hear the ice cream truck at 8.30 at night. Pushed out of the tree because I'd put a spider in your jello before it jelloed, remember? <laughs> and you were eating away. <laughs> it's been the most important thing in my life, Jess, that you've always been there for me and I've always been there for you. And it would kill me, Jess. If what I'm about to tell you changed that, but I have to tell you, you have to know. You know Dan was shot. I know that, Mary. It happened in my house. <laughs> and he was shot in the kidneys. The kidneys. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't the heart or the brain where there's only one. <laughs> he was shot in two kidneys, Jess. I see. And what about the rest? <laughs> okay, sorry. The, um... Pop Goes the Weasel is very loud, and this seems rather dramatic for that to be in the background, so I think I should give it a second. <laughs> it just kept getting louder. <laughs> the rest of what? Of his kidneys? He only has two. 
Oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That's all anyone has. Really? I thought there were more. When I used to buy beef kidneys for Fluffy, it always came a whole bunch in a package. <laughs> no, Jess, we only have two. And Danny was shot in both. And now he needs a new kidney. Oh, Mary, where are you going to get one? Well, uh, from a donor, Jess. That's what I've come to talk to you about. Oh, well, well you've got it, Mary. To take mine, either. Both of them. <laughs> here, here. You take my kidneys, I'll get my coat. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jess, he can't use yours. Now, Mary, I know it's a woman's kidney, but you have to tell Danny. Nobody will ever know. See, it'll be on the inside. No one will ever be able to tell. <laughs> no, Jess, we, we have a donor. The only donor that we can use. Um, Danny's father. Mary, sit down. Now, Mary, I, I know that you've been under a lot of strain. I know you're tired, Mary. Mary, Danny's father is dead. <laughs> no, Jess. Danny's father is Chester. Did I mention that it's Friday night and the world is awake? Because Pop Goes the Weasel just keeps coming back. Chester? Chester, Chester. <laughs> you mean the Chester I know? It happened before you were married. Before you were even going together. You and Chester. I'm so sorry, Jess. And you never told me. You got married. I didn't want to hurt you. I couldn't find a good reason to tell you and risk hurting you. What good would have come of it? You and Chester. I should have told you. I can't believe it. Oh, Jess. Please don't be angry with me. All these years and you never told me. Practically our whole lives. I trusted you with everything. with all my thoughts and my most private fears. When you knew everything about my marriage, when my marriage was everything in my life, when I let you know every corner of my soul and you kept it from me. When you sat there listening and knowing. Oh, Mary, I feel so totally, totally betrayed. That would definitely be a difficult situation to process. I mean, he's her ex-husband now, but your sister has just told you, hey, I slept with your ex-husband and we created a child that's now like 28 years old. Like, Jessica has watched this child grow and become the man that he is and now is finding out that her own husband was her was the child's father. That's kind of devastating. I mean, it's got to be a little bit easier now that they're divorced. But since it's her sister that's lied to her for so long and kept this, I don't know. That, that's, that, that's rough. 
I, I really feel for Jessica. This family goes through some fucked up shit, but this one specifically is... And Pop Goes the Weasel just keeps coming back. I feel awful that this tremendous, dramatic scene was underscored by Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm praying that it's not coming up as loudly in the video as it is in my earshot right now because it's it, it's devastating to the episode, honestly. I'm going to pause it until it goes away. Okay, I think they finally popped the weasel. It's it's passed for a couple of minutes. My father is a crook and a murderer as well. Um, Danny, I'm your daddy. <laughs> oh, don't, oh, daddy, don't laugh because if you break a spleen or something, you're on your own. <laughs> I draw the light of organs I don't have an abundance of. So. Oh, what a sense of humor. <laughs> Is he serious? It's a long story. I... I don't believe it. You see, I don't either. Now, there's two people right there. So let's not uh, rush into something we'll all be sorry about later, Marianne, the, the coffee shop. And, oh, Danny, would you like a Snickers? Sit, Chester. <laughs> Danny, it's true. It was a long time ago, but it's true. Chester's my father? 
person I respect the least in the whole world has my chromatons. Chromatons. <laughs> you think I'm overjoyed? To leave me alone. Both of you. Annie, I know that you're confused. And you'll probably hate me right now. What do you want me to do, huh? Jump out of bed, kiss him, and call him daddy? Yeah. Please! Get out! You don't have to forgive me, ever. But there's one big reason why you can never hate Chester. Why? He gave me you. It's not a great day to be Mary. Had to make the rounds and tell three different people. No, she told what she she told Jody that they had different fathers, but he still doesn't know specifically. Yeah, no, no, Please, I'm fine. Just how is Danny? Please. You start with the powder. What's the matter with you? Come on, man. Please. I mean, does a kid be fit? Is it what? Is it? <laughs> lips. What's with the what's with lips? Leave me alone, pal. Yeah. No, sorry. No, man. Not you. I got. Hold on a second. I need to unplug the fridge for a minute because I can't hear anything and I can't handle waiting 20 more minutes to finish this episode. Oh my god, I got a clown over here, man. Please, is everything okay? You sure? Mary, I'm fine, really. Listen. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to be on with the governor here. Yeah, or, I'll tell him, I'll tell him, I'll tell him. All right, yeah, listen, listen, uh, listen, I, I, I love you. All right, and you told Danny I love him and everybody else over there. You tell him I love him, all right? And listen, Mayor, uh, when you see me on TV, don't be a little shocked, all right? I'm wearing lipstick. <laughs> what is it? What are you doing with me here? Well, who am I, Barbara Streisand? I'm going to meet the governor here with mascara? Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sheriff, I'm Morty Stevens, the director. Welcome to the news. I'd like you to meet Governor Rod. Governor, I, hello, hi, sir. This is really <laughs> That's my wife says hello. You're a heck of a guy, Campbell. Is that the way you pronounce it, Campbell? Ah, uh, yes, sir. So the, the P is silent, like the K in knife. <laughs> yes, sir. That's very confusing, a P in Campbell. I don't understand that. Well, then, thank you, sir. <laughs> this is our anchorman, Philip Wentzler. Congratulations, Sheriff. This is probably the biggest crime bust since they captured Hitler. Oh, you know, I don't think they ever captured him. So, of course, we'll be asking the question. Now, Sheriff, what's your first name? Bart? Uh, no, that's Bert. Bert. Bart would be better. Governor, what do you think? Oh, Bart's got more bite. Yeah. Bart. Bart. See what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. My, my mother, though, is a lost and patient, so, uh, too much bite. Should be more oldy, westy like. Black Bart. Excuse me. Think that's too much of a bite? Uh, so, excuse me. Look, my kid's in the hospital, so I like to get this over. Let's just leave it Bert for now. Okay, Bert, now run it by me once. Exactly how you captured these guys and don't skimp on the action. Well, I, I exchanged some gunfire with some of the bodyguards. No good. no good. The gun is too ordinary. We have to accent the bat. You did have a bat, right? Yeah. Bat. Bat. There we go. Bat camp. Bat, I like it, Bert. You like bat? Like what I do with this me. bat is no good. It doesn't work. This is Little League. Props, get me another bat. We need a, a bigger bat for Bert here. That's my bat. He now, my bat. Bart. No, it's Bert, not Bart. Bert. Bring the bat Bert, back, please. We, we, we want to play up the bats and we forget about the gun. But that's not what really happened. Pretty baby, this is the new showbiz. <laughs> I need the rating. Stay <laughs> by in 20 seconds. Places, everybody. It reminds me a little bit of uh, these true crime podcasters or YouTubers that want to make the money telling the story, but won't say the actual words because then they won't make any money. <laughs> they can't show a gun on the news, so they have to. They had a bat. Now they won't. Now they don't want the bat. It's all about the ratings. They don't care about the actual story. They just care about people paying attention and listening and being engaged and not being offended in any way. Oh, isn't it fun how this shit never changes? Here, Gov 
cameras over there. Now speak oh, up and always news. watch the cameras with, with the red lights, huh? Ten seconds. All right, let's do it. Five, four, three, two. It's on the spot news with anchorman Philip Glenn Smith. And now, here's Philip. Thank you and welcome to On the Spot News. On the spot is the governor of our state and Sheriff Bart Campbell, who single-handedly made the largest organized crime bust of the century. Sheriff Campbell, tell us how you did it. Did he call him Bart? <laughs> I hit him. <laughs> yes, he struck a blow for America and sent organized crime crashing to the camp. Uh, no, no, I was just doing my job. Just doing my job. An American man following the American dream. A man possessed by an anger, by a passion. Wait a minute, guys. A man who dared go where no man had gone before. Excuse Making me. our land a greater place to live. Sir? With pioneer wisdom and one lone baseball bat, he marched into a veritable snake pit. And there, with God and raw courage on his side... Sorry, excuse me, Governor. That, I mean, sir, that's, that's, not, that's not what happened. Thank you, Sheriff. <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. It's just, it's very simple. It's just that, that sooner or later, everybody's going to have to stand up and protect their own. I mean, people are going to have to learn. They're going to say, no, you, you can't take this from me. Or no, you may not do that to me. When people find out it's up to them to say no, then they have to make a choice. I chose to say no. It's no big deal. He has no courage. It's just that somebody hurt my kid, my family. And you can't let people go around hurt or your family. So you don't. Fuck yeah, Bart. I gotta go. I got my kids in the hospital. I gotta go see him. Excuse me. So Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here. The answer, pure and simple. A modest man saying no. That's right, Philip. Should men like this be limited by local office? No. Men like this have too much to give our country. That is why I have chosen that brave human being to head my war on crime. At last, a man who says no. Sheriff Bat Campbell. <laughs> Coming up next, our special segment, Schooling. And why it's a good thing. <laughs> Again, this is so relevant. They support him and back him, but they have no idea what he just said, and they don't fully know his name. And now we're going to pretend to have a conversation. Out. Well, so much for bedside manner. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. What are you writing? I will. Uh, you spell bequeath with a C or a K. Uh, what are you bequeathing? My guitar. I didn't know you played guitar. I've had it for years. <laughs> it's funny learning things about someone you've known a long time. We found out a lot about each other. You play the guitar, I'm your father. <laughs> you gave it to me. I did? Christmas, 1965. Oh. Who are you willing it to? You? <laughs> hey, it's the least I can do. After all, you're giving me a kidney. Yes. Thanks. The thing is, I got to put a rider on it saying that if you die, it goes to your next of kin. Just me. Oh, illegal red tape, I'm telling you. I'm finding it real hard to believe that you're my father. But yeah, well, believe me, I find it hard to believe, too. We don't look anything alike. Oh, my God. What? I have to go to the bathroom. I don't believe it. They're taking out a kidney, and I have to go to the bathroom. Boy, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> Just to try and relax. They're going to be wheeling us in soon. So, I, it's a quick sidebar. I know they're about to do the surgery and all, which means they probably got all of everything in order, but they would have done testing to make sure he actually was the father before 
going under the knife, right? Because not to say Mary is a slut, but it's possible at the time she could have been. She was with Chester, she said, for two full weeks. Maybe there was somebody else around at the time. It probably was Chester, but I'm just curious now. One kidney. I'll have one kidney. That's all you need. Oh, really, Dr. Schweitzer? <laughs> That's what Dr. Arguleen said on the Today Show. One kidney is like having one lip. <laughs> Come on, don't complain. I'm only going to have one, too. Yeah, mine. What happens if I need it sometime? I'll give it back to you. <laughs> what will you do with no kidneys? I won't drink. <laughs> That'll help. What if I start to develop your habits? What if I turn into you? This isn't a brain transplant. <laughs> what were you when you started balding? I am not balding. I'm going to have a scar. Scar. You could die on the table. <laughs> That's positive. You're getting hysterical. Sir, me, I'm not hysterical. I'm perfectly calm. I am being extraordinarily composed during this time of enormous stress. Stress that would probably kill a lesser man. I spit at danger. I laugh at pain. Bring on the doctors. Let them do their worst. Showtime. We're going to have to put you out now, guys. <laughs> uh, you're going to put that needle in and tell me to count backwards from 100, aren't you? But it won't work. I can't be put out. It won't flow through my veins. I swear to God. Chester. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, now, uh, once I put the needle in, you'll feel a little warmth in your chest. This isn't going to work. But believe me, it's no use. I won't go under. It's a complete waste of time. Nobody's ever been able to put me out. Ask my dentist. You're going to be very embarrassed. <laughs> now count. Oh. 100. And... <laughs> Now that Bert's heroism has made him a celebrity, will he continue to fight crime, or will he want his own television series? What will be the outcome of Danny's operation? Will his body accept Chester's kidney? Will Chester's kidney accept Danny's body? And what about the two sisters? Will Jessica ever forgive Mary? Will Mary ever forgive herself? Or will her shocking confession destroy the Tates and Campbells forever? These questions and many others will be answered in the next episode of Soap. Okay, so that was a heavy episode, and unfortunately, I we had a lot of distractions going on. Um, we're moving towards the end of the season, which is the end of the series. I think we've got about six episodes left, maybe a couple of more, under ten. So uh, I'm going to be trying to finish up this series um, before the end of the month. I'm shooting for by the end of the weekend but I don't know when I'm going to have time to really binge and get these last few episodes in. I am still enjoying the show, but it's, it's wild. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious how relevant a lot of this stuff still is, like with them being on the news and them suddenly supporting him, but not fully understanding what he's saying, not knowing his name, trying to edit it for what would be the best for the, the audience that was watching that wouldn't offend them or get them to turn off to get them the best ratings. It's just all so accurate. <laughs>